We have promised the, the citizens in Oslo that we, in 2019, shall have a level city with large car-free areas. That will make it a more friendly city. We will have more space for pedestrians, for children, for bicyclists, and we will also reduce the pollution that we have in the air because people are dying from the high polluted air in Oslo, and we can't accept that. Uh, politicians uh, now in Oslo have said that they want 20% less car journeys inside of Oslo and additionally have the city center free of cars. Uh, so how that affected us is basically to say we have to speed up. We have to speed up the process to get new metro lines, get new trams, get new buses and new modes of transportation, uh, car sharing or what that might be. This is a development that is going one direction. Less cars, fewer cars and uh, better uh, facilities for biking and for walking. So, so it's, it's no question about that. It's just the speed and how we maintain uh, the good atmosphere in the city while we are doing this. This is a large area. It's not only a couple of blocks, it's, it's the whole downtown. So they put the vision before and said, we're going to do this. And now they're investigating how, you know, which streets to start with. Our goal is in the next three, four years to build 60 kilometers of new bike lanes and bike tracks. In the past few years, the city has only been able to build like one, two, three kilometers of new infrastructure. So bumping that up is a massive increase. The former government was very positive for cycling. They weren't that eager to remove car parking to make space for bike lanes. Uh, with the new city council, that's no longer a problem. Oslo is one of the fastest growing cities in Europe and we are increasing the inhabitant number with like 10 to 11,000 new inhabitants each year. Uh, and that is of course a huge challenge. We have to give people the possibility to live in the city without having their own private car. And what we see now is that it's a lot of car sharing systems that are popping up. A lot of uh, families want to live near the city centre, which they didn't do before, and, but they don't have their own private car. We have to observe all growth and, and journeys with public transportation, bicycling and walking. And actually we said walking first, the more they walk the better, and then bicycling, and then public transportation, and then come cars, etc. To me it seems like uh, the Norwegians are used to using their body to, to get around. The public transit here is, is, is really functioning well and there is a lot of great areas for pedestrians, uh, so a lot of people do walk as well. So this is one of the central streets in Oslo. It's a very popular shopping street and it's also an important link between the city center down there and a residential area like the hip district, Grinalöka. It's a totally new kind of street in Norway. There's a lot of shops here and they need to get delivery of the goods. So we decided that we're gonna make it difficult to drive here. It's not gonna be allowed to park, uh, but it's gonna be accessible for cars. We are now uh, removing a lot of the parking places that we have in the city center areas to, to give more space for bicyclists and pedestrians. And we have already started to build new uh, bicycling lanes and roads. Yeah, so all this street, all parking has been removed. Yeah, it just happened last week, like they started doing the work last week. So you're here at a very good time because right now the street is being remade uh, with new asphalt and removing car parking to make space for bike lane and bus lane. And you can see the trucks in the back with the asphalt. So we left some space to put the red asphalt that we use on bike lane. The other side, uh, they're making a bus lane. So when you cycle down, you cycle in the bus lane and up you cycle uh, in a bike lane. I've been helping a big new urban development within this downtown core building hundreds of new uh, dwellings and blocks and the, the precondition for that development is that it's, it is to be car free. So it's a precondition for every new development in, within the downtown core. What we're looking at is a street, it's actually a bridge. 
it's had bike lanes for many years but what we did this year and that's we're doing that all over town is that we're upgrading our existing infrastructure because Oslo unfortunately has a lot of narrow bike lanes so a quick fix for us that doesn't require a lot of planning and years and rebuilding you know is to just like make them as wide as possible and then narrow the car lane as much as possible minimum standard for cars and then maximum for bikes Oslo is not known for being like a really bike friendly city and to like go out and sort of like do a statement on it we're gonna do this it's really great yeah it's more people biking every year yeah uh, every winter you see more people out winter biking will they manage to do it in the timeline they said that rest to be seen but at least we feel like there's a good movement forward uh, it's good news for us you can hear in the background that they just started working on the street. What they're doing is that they're putting new asphalt, removing the car parking, uh, giving that space to bikes, and then this cycle track uh, is being given to the pedestrians because, as you can see, the sidewalk here is way too narrow for the number of pedestrians in this street. And we see now that a lot of new citizens in Oslo are using their bikes each day to the work, to schools, to universities, which is a very, very positive development for the city. These are uh, city center buses, and if you see it, it's got four doors. And the reason for that is to make it as, a, as efficient as possible for people to go out and in. Uh, inside the bus because if uh, it takes too long uh, the, of each stop the journey for me and you will take too long and then we're not going to take the bus we're going to take the car. In Oslo is kind of based on trust that you do have a ticket when you board so when you buy your metro pass uh, you can choose to do it in the metro app and uh, you'll, you can buy every, anything from a day a single trip or a month or even a year. Half of our uh, clients use an app and with that app, we, we show that you have pay, uh, paid, and it's a blinking kind of picture to really make sure that you pay today. And it speeds up getting on, and it speeds up the buses getting there, so you're almost never late. They run really efficiently, so like 20 people getting on board a bus takes maybe a minute. Just showing them the picture, and you sit down. That's it. It takes you 10 minutes to walk from the central station to basically everywhere in like downtown Oslo Centrum. So. So the city had city bikes for many years, but uh, this year it's a whole new system, new lighter bikes, a lot more bikes, a lot more racks going further out of the city center. And the increase of usage has been massive. The first four months uh, it was used one million times and that's twice as much with the old system. The old bike was like it was heavy, it wasn't working properly, but the people made, who made it now, they made it into a good bike. I see new city bikes every week, just yeah. like they're building new uh, stations and dockings, uh, so it's like it's Really growing. The bike share system is fantastic. I've been a user for many, many years. They implemented a new system this year, which is uh, easier, uh, better bikes, and it's easy to pick up the bike, it's easy to find a spot to deliver it. And they've made them a lot more solid. I know that the computer system as well, in order to rent the bike, has been uh, largely improved. If you have the possibility to easily access a bus or a metro, and then afterwards take a city uh, bicycle to the station, those integrated mobility forms. Those together are more likely to make you want to take those means instead of the car. You don't see the sporty types on those bikes. It's normal people, no helmet, you know, dresses, uh, skirts, whatever. It's like a, a really important uh, measure to normalize cycling in the city. It is very exciting to have politicians who says we're good, but we have to be a lot better. Uh, both for the environmental concerns uh, and responsibility that Norway also has, 
but also we have the potential to make the city a good place for companies and private persons. It's one thing to get rid of the cars, but you still need to kind of find a solution for those cars. It's not like they're going to disappear overnight. I think it will definitely happen and I think they will be promoted by this within the competition between cities. So Stockholm, Copenhagen, Helsinki, these cities will look to Oslo and say, wow, that really made your city so much greater than ours, so we have to follow. You see when we get the cold winter that also the air will be less polluted. I think that people will be very happy with the changes that we are now doing. Of course there are criticism, there are discussions on it, because people are afraid of what they are going to do with their cars. But anyway, I think that as long as we give people good alternatives, I think that everyone will be happy.